start. Um, so the question is, what's my opinion of TDD or test-driven development? Uh, my short answer is, I think you should do it, but I absolutely despise the name and uh, think that people do it too much. I'm going to say some things that are extremely unpopular right now. I hate testify. It's a Golang thing that people throw into shit to like do extra testing of their Go programs. It's completely unnecessary. Uh, the base testing stuff that comes with Go is fine. So we're not talking about Go right now. Let's go back to the test-driven development idea. Uh, first of all, everybody is, doesn't know what test-driven development is. Everybody thinks test-driven development means you write a whole bunch of unit tests and then you ship it over. And see. I also hate CICD. I hate it. I hate all of it. I hate all the parts of it because it removes the human. So the main reason I don't like anything to do with test-driven development is stop removing the human from the testing. This is the biggest problem with this stuff is that it throws out the baby with the bathwater, whatever you want to call it, the humans that are responsible. So when I did a lot of our development at IBM, people would say it was more expensive, but I had a, there was a QA team. There were people who were paid to do testing. And, and that's old school now, and that's a waste of money, and nobody wants to do that. I think it's that's a fail. Uh, so we're going to, we're no, I haven't got anything on CICD. We're going to talk about that. But the problem is, is you keep taking, people keep trying to automate away the humans in the system. And I, I am all about automation. I automated myself out of jobs before. It was awesome. And then into better jobs, right? I'm all about that. I'm not about removing the user from it. So what I prefer instead to say, uh, and there's other words for this, it's called, uh, I, this is my term, I think, prefer uh, usage-driven uh, uh, design. So, so that means the first thing you write is how is this software going to be used? How is this API going to be used? What's the specific API? What's not, not you know, and, and do it without code. You know, like, like do it on paper, do it on paper or, you know, it, with drawings or paper prototyping. Uh, as in paper, you know, they call it as in paper prototyping uh, when you actually have pieces, right? Uh, so I think, and some people call this behavior-driven design. Some people like UML. I, I got really obsessed with UML for a while, too much so. And then, it, I, but don't bike shed, right? Avoid the bike shedding that can sneak in, uh, that sneaks in. Uh, and and you know, like focus and promote. So promote. Uh, avoid bike shedding, but promote yak shaving. Yak shaving is awesome. Yak shaving is you go into something thinking you don't need it. It's just this fun little thing that you want. And then it ends up getting built into this thing and people add to it and add to it. Zet, clip. How, how many things have we made? The knowledge exchange grid itself was like a way to share information that started out as I just want a more reliable way to do something. And it just keeps growing. That's yak shaving. So you end up doing a thing and then you end up having all of this stuff that ends up being applicable and because you didn't overly criticize it early on, it builds, it builds itself into something that's substantial and it becomes real. So, so, you know, scratching itch kind of thing, right? So, uh, scratch own itch, you know, how, how are you going to use test driven development to scratch your own itch? You know, at a certain point, you're going to, you're going to define what your itch is and how to scratch it. <laughs> And and you should probably say, well, here's how to scratch the itch. You know, here's the stuff that's gonna scratch. But but just get get you know just get the idea. You know, yes, unit testing is fine. Uh, uh, testing is is fine. But stop obsessing. People spend so much time mocking mocks and mocking types and like changing the format of their code so it'll work. There are some optimizations to do. You should write the code. Uh, should write uh, the code such that it is testable when you can, but there's so many cases where you're creating code that's not testable. Some of the stuff I'm doing with like curl APIs and stuff, when I'm curling down APIs and thing, there's no way to write a test case for that. You know what the test is? Me running the command. So so write out you know the behaviors. Write out the behavior. So and so does this uh, behavior. You know, uh, uh, you know, as if you know on paper. Uh, as if on paper, you know, or even on paper, and then have them go through it and see if it fills, fulfills the requirements. I, the reason I don't like test-driven development, as I understand it, and I, there's so many different definitions of TDD out there. I, I, I heard some people on a podcast say that TDD did not mean unit tests and write code it, write codable code for tests. So that was not the meaning of it. But I guarantee you, that's what most people think it is. So it's already, it's like really misunderstood. 
So first of all, what are you even talking about? Um, and, and then, you know, and then after that, so I actually prefer, I, I, I really, really love words and I get really annoyed when people use horrible terms like full stack developer or DevOps that have no, they're just this woozy abstract shit that nobody can understand. And test driven development is one of those things. I would rather they call it behavior driven development, which has its own thing. Uh, which has come to mean you have to use these certain verbs and you have to use this certain library and all that. that's not that's not what it originally intended to mean. It's just come to mean that because that's people. Oh, you mean this library doing this? I know. So I've, I'm starting to call things usage driven development or user centric development or what <laughs> or whatever you want to call it. But let's just start putting the emphasis on the user. Let's bring the user back in, and that includes the software developers. If you're making an API. You should have a stakeholder. If you're following Agile or any of this shit, if you're following any of this, then you are supposed to have a stakeholder regularly present in your meetings. And that stakeholder is supposed to be there to help you understand what you're going to do, what comes next, how to do it. You know, oh, that doesn't make any sense. They're going to be your, your you know, like keep your feet on the ground kind of, kind of, kind of person that's that's there because you're making at the end of the day you're making software for people uh it may be way up the chain and it doesn't get used by people for a very very long time but, but the coders and the other systems that are going to use it those things need to be mocked and you need to focus on how the thing's going to be used so so when i do my development the first thing i do is write write the usage doc that's the very first thing i do I just, I don't get too overly verbose with it. I'm like, okay, what are the commands going to be here? And I just write out the commands. And then I find after, as I start coding it, and by the way, you know, rapid prototyping means using shell scripts and stuff. Rapid prototyping in, in shell scripts. Uh, I, I used to do this in Python and Perl. I actually don't do that now because Python is so powerful and Perl is so powerful that you might end up writing the whole application. And so no, nobody's going to, they're going to take your Perl and, Pro, and Python and just don't, you know, don't, don't make your prototype too good, right? Because it, don't make your prototype or your hack too good. This is a long time rule because, because your boss will take it and use it as production and they <laughs> to, they'll never get a chance to do it right. Uh, so, you know, too, you know, too good. Right, uh, uh, it, you have to have stakeholders. Uh, pro, uh, don't make your prototype too good, uh, and you know a stakeholder. At the end of the day, they're kind of who's your stakeholder if you're writing an API like like command box, right? My stakeholders are other developers. They're going to be putting together containers and go from scratch containers, and they're going to want to figure out how to import their own, you know, uh, sub commands and things like that. So I want them involved, uh, and that's why I think you should you should define your API. Uh, as you, some of it, this is why I think it's so important to have sort of a loose idea of things when you're first doing it and then, and then solidify it. By the way, everything that I've suggested right now, these are all fundamental tenets of the Unix, of the Unix philosophy. So, uh, so this is, this is all based on a much larger thing called the Unix philosophy. That means you, you, you start with filters and scripts and com com composition and, you know, microservices themselves are an extension of the Unix philosophy. So, you know, if you, if you really truly understand all of this and you're doing Unix philosophy and you're thinking about how one piece should be used and who's using it and how are they going to use it, then you're just, you're just designing the usage around it. So write, write out how it's going to be used if it's a command, like, no, like what is the exact command they're going to use and what are they going to get? And then write, you know, the other stuff, right? And if you need to do unit testing and all that stuff in the interim to make sure your functions are doing what they're supposed to, that's fine. That's fine. But that just, that I don't even like considering that a part of the TDD because people get so wrapped up in getting 100% coverage, including me, they are getting 100% coverage on their things. Oh, I, I got 85% on my, on my, on my test. I get, oh no, my label on GitHub doesn't have a full percentage, right? Because, and so they'll do shit like they'll, they'll like do a test that just like calls the function, doesn't even test any of the behavior at all because they're so holy grail focused on getting this, this magical number so that they're, they can get the icon that, that's coming from some automated thing that has no idea how the thing is going to be used by a human at all. Get over it and start using real humans to test your code. And that means you or a buddy or somebody else. Get somebody who doesn't know how to use the code who's going to go use it and use that as your test driven development. So bring the humans back. That's my take on that. <laughs>